Well, I think I have spent the last 20 to 25 years convincing people, researchers, clinicians, doctors, patients, that neuroplasticity after a stroke is actually a thing. And this, this myth uh, that there is a plateau after which your brain cannot recover is, is a myth. It's completely false. The brain has the ability to recover, reorganize function with repeated practice, with repeated stimulation and therapy. That's, that's what those early studies showed. It was about you practice something, your brain cells, your neurons learn to re, you know, they, they keep firing and they reorganize and they, and they collect together. And that's exactly what happens after a stroke as well. I would say that today, the progress we've made so far is the, the, the scientific community is completely convinced that neuroplasticity is a thing because we have several tools at our disposal, at disposal like neuro brain imaging that shows that somebody who has had a stroke for 15 years, like yourself too, you've had a stroke for a while, but somebody who's had a stroke can continue to show changes and improvements in their brain. What we have not yet fully convinced are the, uh, you know, the entire... The, the 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 neurologists and the funders, the payers, because I think that is when we would have fun, convinced everybody. Because I don't think, I don't think we have to. I don't think I have to ever convince a stroke survivor. They know they have the capacity to recover over time. So it's it's really pushing the pushing the work over and over again until we can convince payers that even for someone who is 10, 15 years after a stroke. They have the potential to recover and they should receive the therapy. That's still work that needs to be done. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. You know what? Because on a couple of episodes ago, so on episode 266, I was interviewed by a gentleman who has an organization here in Australia called uh, called um, Intensive Care at Home. And what he's done is he's pushed to have people come out of the intensive care ward and transfer the intensive care service to their home where the family is. It solves so many problems. But in the beginning of his creation of this intensive care at home uh, business, where he pr provides intensive care nurses for the patient, whether they're a stroke survivor or a, it doesn't matter how they become that. Um, and the gentleman's name is Patrick Hutzel. Patrick, uh, created the situation where they they bring people home and care for them and take away the the burden of the hospital bed um, being taken up by a long-term intensive care patient and then they make it available for another intensive care patient but what happens is he's constantly fighting with insurance companies because they're talking about cutting the funding because they use words like plateau as a tool to stop the funding they use that as a word that now that you've reached here there's nothing we can do for you what we need to do is cut the funding you're on your own well the reality is is i know and stroke survivors know that the plateau is when the funding should be doubled down on and i'm not saying that it should for everybody i understand that money is not limitless but it's when the most focus in rehabilitation needs to begin because the plateau is the sign that if we stop here, we might not pro progress any further from here. Yeah, uh, you're you're four thousand percent right, <laughs> and I have made it my life and career mission to essentially prove that point as much as I can to change. The practice, at least in the U.S., it's it's very very hard, but it is what I do in my research is to just keep making that point that there is no plateau. As you said, it's a word that people use to stop funding. So we just need to prove, show more and more and more data to make that point. 